What's going on, everyone? We're back with another top five exclusive here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Uh, I'm Alan. I'm still not Brandy. I'm Ed. <laughs> and today, yes, we finally made it. We are going to be talking about my all-time favorite director, Mr. Martin Scorsese. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> In anticipation of Hugo, that's going to be coming out. Uh, me and Ed have decided to continue uh, with our director's top five theme. Uh, this time we'll be talking about our top five underrated Martin Scorsese films. Again, this is... To just to, instead of doing just a straightforward top five, because we'd be sitting here talking about, oh yeah, that Goodfellas is really a good movie. Oh, it, you have Taxi Driver on your list oh, too. Wow, Interesting. wow, how good. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. All right, cool. Um, so I started last time. Did you want to start okay. this time? Okay. So uh, my number five most underrated Scorsese movie is a slight cheat in that it's only part of a movie. Um, mm -hmm. His segment of New York Stories. Oh, okay. Life Lessons is what the short is called. If, if you haven't seen it, New York Stories is yeah. a collection of short films made by Woody Allen, uh, Francis, Francis Ford, Ford Coppola, yeah. uh, uh, Martin Scorsese, mm -hmm. and... It was just those three. It was those three, okay. Yeah, yeah. and um, and I, I think the Scorsese segment is, is the best in the film. Mm -hmm. It features one of my all-time favorite Nick Nolte performances. Mm, yeah, um, okay. Uh, it's a. It's about Nick Nolte plays an artist who it, it, Rosanna Arquette is his girlfriend who has real trouble living with him, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a lot about how artists can be real shit heels <laughs> in 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 the, their life, but still create great art. Yeah, it's a. It's it's about the relationship between the artist and the art itself. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's that's a really great uh, unique pick on that one. Um, I didn't even think about New York Stories. Um, it's really worth checking out for those who haven't seen it. Um, I agree with you that I think Scorsese's segment is the best, and then Woody Allen's, and then Francis Ford Coppola exactly. probably a long way down. Yeah. <laughs> but um, definitely worth checking out. So um, moving on to my number five, uh, my number five film is Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. It kind of irks me when, you know, I speak to other people and they say, oh, Martin Scorsese only does, like, mob or gangster films, which is, like, this completely, is how like, not, like, exactly, that's not how, how it is. The dude has, so like, such a wide range um, of talent. I mean, Alice doesn't live here anymore. The film right after Mean Streets, you know, and it's just a complete departure from, like, the gangster world. I mean, you have Ellen Burstyn. Who was nominated, wasn't she? Nominated and won. Won. One. Oh. Um, who playing this mom who has like this really like terrible past that she's trying to escape from and like rebuild her life uh with with her son um i mean l like i said the performances were great um the supporting cast harvey keitel chris christopherson um a small appearance by jodie foster which i believe was her first role i'm not quite sure on that one um but overall i think it's a fantastic film a really big departure in the style that scorsese had in in mean streets i mean those two movies are really different in terms of style and, and content. Uh, definitely worth checking out for those who haven't seen and it. It's always weird for me to think, oh yeah, Chris Christopherson used to be in quality stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> anyway oh, yeah. uh, my number four is, uh, I, again, nominated, so how underappreciated is it, but mm -hmm. still, The Age of Innocence. Oh, yes. And the reason I say this is because a lot of people like to dismiss this movie as, oh, it's a Merchant, merchant and Ivory hat movie. Mm-hmm. First of all, it's not Merchant and Ivory. Mm. Secondly, it's not set in Europe. It's mm. it's in New York. It's in New York. Yep. Turn <laughs> um, of the century. It, uh, right? it, it yeah yeah. Okay. yeah turn of the century. It's got the great Daniel Day Lewis. It's got Michelle Pfeiffer probably at her height when she was in a lot of good movies. Mm -hmm. It's got one of my favorite Winona Ryder performances, mm -hmm. who I believe she was nominated, uh, and so was uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm. Um, it's got some of of the characteristic Scorsese uh, camera work in it, even, mm -hmm. um, it, it, and it, it is. A, I mean, it is one of those things where it's about uh, feelings being stifled behind the mannerisms of the time. Mm -hmm. And what can and can't be done in that society, but still, I uh, fantastic movie. Yeah, it, it's it's a fantastic film, absolutely. Um, so fantastic that we'll probably be talking about it later on. Mm. But yeah, <laughs> moving on to my number four. Uh, my number four film is from 1985, and it is After Hours. Um, this movie, I believe, Scorsese won Best Director at the Cannes Film Festival. Um, I mean, this is just a really fun weird eccentric film about this dude who really just wants to get laid and then all of a sudden gets into this really like crazy uh 
like a odyssey type adventure trying to like get home um just the weird situations that he pulls himself into and gets pulled into by others um the supporting cast rosanna arquette again uh linda fiorentino cheech and chong Catherine o'hare just really interesting mix of of uh people in, in this um all working just at at their height um again it's a weird but a totally fun movie um there's this there's this scene where uh, Griffin Dunn, his character gets in so much trouble that he looks inside of a window, sees a random person getting shot, and goes, I'll probably be blamed for that one. Right. Too. It's just <laughs> so funny, and it's just a great, great movie. So, Well, I think we'll be talking about that one later as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, my number, are we on number three? Uh, we are on number three. Yes. Number three is Kundun. Mm. which uh, you want to talk about forgotten Scorsese yeah. movies. This is the one. And, and you want to talk about things that aren't about the mob. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I think you can, uh, um, for those of you who don't know, this is an, <laughs> while it's uh, completely set in Asia with Asian actors and, you know, all native cast, it's uh, filmed in English. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it's about the selection of the Dalai Lama and, the, and how he's brought up and how the Chinese took over Tibet. Mm -hmm. Um it's moving. It's it's PG, which I mean, when it's I'm, when a it's, Disney film, isn't it? No, 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 I don't think it's a Disney film. I, I huh. okay, we'll, we'll need our fact people. checker yeah. on that. But but uh, but uh, it's uh, um, it, it's moving. It's it's terrific to see the selection of the Dalai Lama when they set out all of the pieces that are supposed to belong to him, and and the kid has to pick which item is supposed to native inherently belong to him, mm -hmm. and he's reading the guy asking him to figure out. Which one am I supposed to pick? You know, it's a very little kid move. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, oh, and, and I also always think of that scene in The Sopranos where where uh, uh, Tony's nephew sees oh, yeah, yeah. Scorsese and goes, Kundun, man, Kundun. 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 Yeah. Kundun, yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so, yeah, we just found out that it's not Disney. My fault. Uh, no problem. Anyway, um, yeah, really quick, um, I think one of the things that really stands Scorsese above other filmmakers that I enjoy is that he's so religious i mean he infuses religion into all of his films kundun obviously uh, is one of them and the other one is my number three film and it is the last temptation of christ which would have been on my list had i been i don't know on a different day but it fabulous movie right it kind of like surprises me the amount of like controversy that surrounded this film i think just because it's based on jesus my um, own father and stepmother forbade me from seeing it when it came out really yes. wow interesting um so of course i watched it. it's just i mean the idea <laughs> that you know g god and, and jesus it's just like if they are all like like all deity they must understand what it is to be like as a man right and just the, the push and pull and understanding like the sacrifice that jesus had to go through it's just really really interesting and the the stuff that people like like went against with the film wasn't even it it was like the last 30 minutes of the movie it, and, and totally and all they, they hadn't seen it all they heard was jesus has sex i'm not watching that that nobody should see that but what they don't realize is that it's it's, it's a taken out of context. yeah it's a fantasy sequence temp tempting jesus right to show that his sacrifice is such a big monumental thing and 100 percent behind you on that I, I don't know it's it's a fantastic film fantastic performances by everyone in the movie um please great. people peter gabriel score pertin great in it yes people watch the movie and remove yourself from the controversy uh, that surrounded it when the film came out and you'll see uh, a fantastic probably one of the best films about uh, this topic um, I feel so I, I I couldn't love that movie more yeah so uh, my number two is an, another one that I think probably in our generation we forget about the king of comedy yeah uh, th this movie for those of you who don't know it came out uh, it was in the early 80s uh, it was Scorsese reacting to let's go let's take a tri trip back in time, kids. Um, when Taxi Driver came out, mm -hmm. uh, John Hinckley Jr. got obsessed with Jodie Foster, so he went and did a really stupid thing and tried to shoot Ronald Reagan. Um, he ended up shooting James Brady, which is why we have the Brady laws and so on. Anyway, Scorsese felt horrible about that. Made the King of Comedy as a reaction to that incident, mm -hmm. which is about Robert De Niro's character Rupert Pupkin who decides to go out and kidnap a late-night talk show host played by Jerry Lewis in probably one of his only dramatic roles. Right, yeah. And it also features Sandra Bernhardt in a great supporting supporting role. Very crazy in that It's movie. funny and serious and disturbing and wonderful. Yeah, I think, it, to be honest, I feel that's probably one of Scorsese's most um, disturbing 
films um, psychologically. I mean, you have Rupert Pumpkin, who's fantasizing about being such a great co comic, and I mean, the lengths he goes through to even speak to Jerry yeah, Lewis. Yeah, he's is, so awkward. Yeah, it's... so awkward, and oh uh, man, yeah, still unnerving. Great performance. So. <laughs> Okay, moving on to my number two. Uh, you had mentioned it before. It is The Age of Innocence. Um, I mean, to me, I think this film is, in a way, just as violent as, say, like, Goodfellas or Casino, but in, not in the physical sense, more in the emotional and psychological sense. Daniel Day-Lewis, I mean, he is trapped in this world Is there world anything of, he can't do? Yeah, <laughs> is there anything he can't do? Well, yeah, really. He's trapped in this world of tradition and, and manners and... Um, you know, doing what society tells him to do, and all he wants is to follow his heart and, and you know, go for the person he loves, and to be able to to want something like that so much, but to be prevented from it from outside forces is like it's heartbreaking. In, in and my, especially in my because they view her as an impure woman. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, oh, she oh, like she wears red. What do you <gasps> do? Oh my god. <gasps> Yeah, um, I mean, you, you said most of it, fantastic performances all around. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, I mean, people who see this film, uh, like trailers or whatever, and are a little turned away, I mean, it's just as much of a Scorsese film as Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, or Casino. Definitely worth checking out. A masterpiece in my view. So Terrific. Yeah. Well, my number one, you probably already guessed it, because already, he already mentioned it, After Hours. Mm. Um, I remember, I'll never forget the first time I saw this movie. Partly it was because it was a late night showing, but even then, when I came out of that movie, I, I mean, I was I was a little kid, so I was probably shouldn't have been watching it, but <laughs> but I came out of the theater, like, just exhausted. Yeah. Just, you know, the, the movie is hilarious, but it's emotionally exhausting. It's a roller coaster ride, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You feel like, you feel as bad, when, when he sits down in his office chair at the end of that movie, you know, yeah. spent. Spent. I, I'm spent too. He's so spent, he disappears. It, like literally. Exactly, it, yeah. and it, it, that ending almost feels like the ending of another spoiler alert of the Graduate, where you're kind of doing the mm -hmm. what now? Yeah, exactly. Ending. Um, but on top of it, it's also really funny. Uh, just a real quick shout out to one of my favorite shots of all time when he is in, I think it's Terry Gar's apartment, he sees her phone and he needs a phone desperately, and there's the, the camera just goes right yeah. to a phone and he immediately picks it up. I always think of that as one of the signature Scorsese camera moves. Oh, absolutely. That kind of like that flash zoom, like right there. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, you see the character just move off screen towards it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, there's a bunch of different examples of that throughout his movies, but that's just one that comes to mind. Yeah, great movie. I mean, one of the best of the 80s for sure. Um, okay, so let's move on to my number one film. Uh, my number one film is from 1999, and it is Bringing Out the Dead. Um, I thought I, this might come up. I, I love this movie, to be honest with you, up and down. Um, to me, it's kind of like a revisit to Taxi Driver in a way. Um, the thing about Scorsese in general is that a lot of his characters try to be something even though it's very, very difficult uh, for them. Um, you have Nicolas Cage as this guy who's been haunted. Uh, well, first off, he's a paramedic and uh, he's haunted by the death of this girl um, that he tried to save a long time ago. And I mean, she just completely follows him throughout the entire, the entire story of the film. and the more times he tries to save these lives and uh, being unable to it i mean i can only imagine the kind of torment this happens to him psychologically um i mean it's just a fantastic film i thought it was directed magnificently um again the the supporting cast uh john goodman ving rames tom sizemore uh even mark anthony is that crazy uh, <laughs> uh junkie um patricia arquette once again uh coming in um is it patricia or rosanna this time Okay, now you got me confused. It's one of the Arquettes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, They're both blonde. I mean, overall, it's just a, a fantastic movie. Uh, definitely, I feel, belie belongs in the top tier of uh, Scorsese's I, films. I, I'm not necessarily on board with it. I... I... I think I think Nicolas Cage is really good in it. It, it sags in the little for uh, in the middle a little for me. I feel huh. it's a little meandering. Huh. But I, I don't hate it. I just it's in in the lower echelon of Scorsese for me. Well, I mean, like we said, the lower echelon of Scorsese is, still is like than... the highest echelon of any other director. So that, I'm on, uh, I'm okay. I'm back you with that. Cool. All right. So that does it for our top five Martin Scorsese underrated films. Um, if you have any that you would like to mention, please let us know at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Uh, I think it's safe to say that we're both interested in Hugo coming Damn out. Skippy. Definitely a, a turn for him. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. See ya.